Does God let evil people rule? I think this is a hard question to answer, but it's a very applicable one, especially in our in our culture today where I feel like politics dominate a lot of the thought of many people. And we have this question in the United States. Every few years we get one party that gets elected, and the next year the next party replaces them, and then a couple of years later it's just this back and forth and back and forth. And one side would say that the other side is evil, and the other side would say that this side is evil. It's very polarizing. So in today's episode of Reading Your Bible in a Year, we're going to talk about that question. Does God let evil people rule? And I'm not going to get in the minutia of modern politics, but I will get in the minutia of ancient politics. So if you have a Bible and you want to read along with me, today I'll be in 1 Kings chapter 21. And this is a really interesting story. It's almost like a story that we really shouldn't know about. But there's this man, his name is Naboth, and he owned a vineyard that was next to the palace. And this is what the Bible says. It says that the king of Israel wanted to go buy Naboth's land, but he replied, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance that was passed down from my ancestors. So in Israel, no one sold land to each other. It was set up that when the Israelites came in and conquered the promised land, they were each given parts of the land. So if my family came in and conquered part of the land, we would roll dice, it would be divvied up. You can go read in Joshua. This is a mini chapter long process, but essentially my family got this amount of land. And then I would pass it down to my children, and they would pass it down to their children, and so on and so forth. So for many generations now, Nabu's family has owned this land. But now the king's wanting to come and buy it. Now, they would sell land, but never on a permanent basis. It would always be returned to them in the year of Jubilee, or every 49 years. Every seventh, seventh year, it would be returned. So Naboth knew that if he permanently sold the land to the king, he would be dishonoring God by selling something that doesn't belong to him. Remember, in the book of Leviticus, it says that the land belongs to God and they're just occupying it. So he would have done something that in God's eyes would have been evil. Now, that's a lot of kind of legal Levitical stuff to go over, but it's very important for this story because what happens next is the king gets really upset. He goes in and his wife asked in verse five, what is the matter? His wife Jezebel asked him. Jezebel is a very evil woman. If you go back over the next few chapters, we see her persecuting the prophets of God. We see her persecuting Elijah. She's just a very evil woman. What's making you so upset and that you're not eating, she asked him. I asked Nabu to sell me his vineyard or trade it, but he refused, Ahab told her. You Are you the king of Israel or not, Jezebel demanded. Get up and eat something and don't worry about it. I'll get Nabu's vineyard. So Jezebel paid no regard to the commandments of God. She didn't care about any of this that was commanded for her to follow in God's holy nation Israel, the wife of the king doesn't care at all about following the commands of God. And that bleeds over to the king. I I think a side note here with Jezebel is it's better to live alone in the desert than in a quarrelsome warm house. It talks about that in the book of Proverbs. So you should really pay attention to who you're marrying. Are they going to help you follow God? But what we see now is is that she goes in verse 10 and hires two scoundrels to sit across from Naboth at this big gathering in their town and accuse him of cursing God. And if you curse God in this land, then that was an offense that they could use to stone you and kill you. So look what she does. Naboth, following the law, trying to obey God, is then then Jezebel uses the law, manipulates it to kill someone who's trying to follow God. I think a minor example of this is whenever you get around people that aren't Christians and they take and twist the Bible to try to make you not believe in God. They take verses out of context and say it says one thing when it really doesn't. But this is a really good example of when that's taken to the extreme. So it actually happens. They have this big gathering and and Naboth goes and they these people that she hires tells lies about him, accuses him, and then he's killed. So it seems like the, the bad guy won in this scenario. The evil man won. 
But then Elijah shows up in verse 17. It says, But the Lord said to Elijah, Go down to meet the king of King Ahab of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He will be at Naboth's vineyard in Jezreel, claiming it for himself. Give him this message. This is what the Lord says. Wasn't it enough that you killed Naboth? Must you rob him too? See, so remember, he's stealing something. Just because Naboth died, this would have been passed down to his children. So he's stealing from Naboth. Because you have done this, dogs will lick your blood at the very place where they licked the blood of Naboth. So what I find interesting here is that King Ahab and, Jez- and Jezebel rule for a lot, many years after this event. But God eventually enacts punishment onto them. So when we think about, does God allow evil people to rule? Yes, very clearly, he does. Why he does that, I'm not going to get into the specifics of each case, but we can see that he does. So what's our job here? Our job is to obey the commandment we get in Romans 13, verse 1. Everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God, and those in position of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has done in sub what God has instituted and they will be punished for the authorities do not strike fear in the people who are doing right but those who are doing wrong. So what we see here in Romans and it goes on and this is a big topic but essentially we are called to obey the authorities that are set up above us. Christians are not supposed to be rebellious people but simple people that live godly lives. The only time that we are to rebel against the government is when it is preventing us from following the laws of God. And the laws of God as Christians, the biggest ones that we have to obey is loving neighbor as yourself, loving God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then also the great commission to go out and make disciples of all nations. So in nations where it is permitted or illegal to preach the gospel, I would tell them, that they are commanded to disobey their government in that case. But by and large, if you don't like the tax laws, we're supposed to pay taxes. If you don't like what your government's doing, you're still supposed to obey them unless they're permitting you from following God. Anyways, I hope this helps you build your faith. If it does, then be sure to hit the like button. It really does help this channel. And I'll be sure to see you back here tomorrow as we continue to read through scripture together.